Welcome to Learn Biology and last time we discussed some scientists that contributed to our knowledge of DNA, RNA and protein synthesis. Now we are continuing with that with another group of scientists and we are beginning with a scientist named Rosalind Franklin. Rosalind Franklin spent her whole life uh, x-raying biological molecules such as we can add here we have DNA, viruses, bacteria, and just any basic, these are just a few of the basic molecules she studied and uh, x-rayed. And she was known as an x-ray crystallographer, meaning a person who takes images with an x-ray machine. And from her research, we uh, discovered, she, her independent research uh, she discovered that DNA was a helix. And this is common knowledge to us today, but she independently discovered that DNA is a helix structure, helical structure. And here's an image that she took in her lab. Now, this was very important, but the problem is that she never received much credit for her work. She never received credit for considering the DNA is a helical structure and what actually happened was that her work was technically stolen from her and used by two other scientists who received a Nobel Prize later on but um, the final thing is that Rosalind Franklin died of cancer of course because she worked with x-rays all her life but uh, she was very important and contributed a lot to uh, biological molecules by taking pictures. So that's Rosalind Franklin. Next people we'll discuss are Watson and Crick. Watson and Crick, uh, their main purpose was to discover the structure of DNA. They wanted to know the secret of life. And they discovered it by saying that DNA was a double helix meaning structure such as this and so double helix and they spent their lifetime uh, on many projects but this was one of them and they received credit for cons uh, for proving that DNA was a double helix and they received the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine for this however they did steal some of Rosalind Franklin's work I don't know if you can say steal but they uh, used her pictures to determine that DNA was a double helix without Rosalind Franklin knowing. So that is something always keep in mind with them. The next group of scientists we're discussing are Martha Chase and Alfred Hershey. Now what these two scientists did together in collaboration was they worked together with viruses and proved that DNA was the genetic material in cells. So DNA was the genetic material. Again, this is common knowledge that is uh, taught in 7th, in 8th grade life science these days. But before, in the 1800s and 1900s, it was believed that proteins were the genetic material, not DNA. So, Martha Chase and Alfred Hershey performed an experiment, the famous blender experiment. And yes, they actually did use a blender in their experiment. This is known as the blender experiment. And what they did was take a virus, a virus, uh, a typical virus, bacteriophage. Uh, it's a group of viruses that infect bacteria. So they took a virus and mixed them with bacteria. So virus mixed with bacteria. And what this showed was that when the viruses infected the bacteria they transferred DNA rather than proteins. Viruses contain both proteins and DNA but when the virus infected the bacteria DNA was transferred inside the bacteria. And those of who uh, need to know viruses work by opening up a cell and then infecting the cell with their DNA so the virus can replicate and 
can look it up on Wikipedia on how viruses replicate, but they transferred DNA into the bacteria, which proved that DNA was the genetic material in cells, not proteins, because, vi and because viruses use DNA to reproduce, not proteins. So that is what Martha Chase and Alfred Hershey did, and they received the Nobel Prize for their work with viruses. The next group of scientists, the final group, are Matthew Meselson and Franklin Stahl. So, Matthew Meselson and Franklin Stahl. What they did was prove that DNA was semi-conservative, meaning that when DNA replicates, as we can see in the image here, it is half old and half new. So when DNA replicates, it is semi-conservative, meaning half old and half new. As we can see in the image, the original DNA is blue. The two new strands that are formed contain half blue and half yellow. The yellow is new, the blue is old, so it's half old and half new. And how they did this was they grew E. coli in a nitrogen uh, enriched uh, solution. They used nitrogen 14 and nitrogen 15. They grew some E. coli in 14 and grew some other E. coli in nitrogen 15. When they also when they combined E. coli in both the groups, they found that half of the DNA contained nitrogen 14 and the other half contained nitrogen 15. They proved that DNA was semi-conservative. That was a very brief uh, explanation of the uh, experiments, but please check it out on the web if you want more detail. But the point is that they proved that DNA was semi-conservative. So thank you for watching Biology and we'll see you next time.